If you want to see how I transformed this kind of ugly plastic three drawer storage unit from Walmart for only $15 into a high end fabulous super glam nightstand, just keep on watching. To start this project, I removed all three drawers and then proceeded to spray paint the front only with silver metallic spray paint. This is to ensure when you open the drawer, you don't see the ugly white plastic. And it also helps once we cover some of the parts later, if something should show through that it's not white, but silver. To give it more durability, since the drawers will be sliding in and out, I decided to add a coat of polyurethane. Just note that it will change the color of the silver slightly, and this step is optional. I measured the height and width of the storage unit, and then transferred those measurements onto a poster board I had gotten from Walmart. When measuring the side of the storage unit, I also made sure to include the measurements for the width of the wood which goes at the bottom and for the mirror at the top and added those measurements to the overall dimensions. In other words, the poster board will cover the side of the mirror and the side of the wood at the bottom for a clean look. Then I took my box cutter with a new razor blade to make sure that I had clean lines and just traced along those lines that I had made. I then proceeded to cover the poster board with silver mirror contact paper. I made sure that it overlapped about an inch on all four sides so I could fold it over. I used a heavy credit card to smooth the paper out and any little bubbles remaining were easily removed with my fingers by just rubbing on it. You have to remember to be very gentle and handle the foam board very carefully because it damages very easily, even the sturdier ones like from Walmart which were $2.99 each. And I did end up unfortunately doing that so my solution was to get a cheaper foam board from Dollar Tree and just add a poster board on top of it. I simply cut out the same shape again and then just use some Gorilla Spray Adhesive to put it on top of the foam board. It was a great solution and over a dollar cheaper. Next it was time to create the bottom base for the nightstand so I would be able to screw some legs on. I placed it as close as possible to the ends not to waste any wood and traced out the shape. This plywood was from Home Depot and it was $10 but I will leave a list of items used in the description box below. I then used my saw to cut out the shape that I needed. I did cut it about a quarter inch smaller than what I had traced out just so you wouldn't be able to see it as much once it is placed under the nightstand. And spray painted just the edges a metallic silver just in case something was showing. I screwed the silver metallic chrome furniture legs that I purchased at Amazon onto the wood first and then I secured the wood to the nightstand by going through the larger hole and uh, securing it to the plastic. The six inch chrome legs from Amazon came in a set of four for $17.99 and in order to save money I used a piece of wood from Dollar Tree and lined it up with the leg to get the exact size and then my husband trimmed the leg for me. This really saved quite a bit of money. The nightstand will be placed against the wall so nobody will see the back legs. I did, however, spray paint them a silver metallic just to kind of give it a good finish. Then I used Gorilla Construction Adhesive and just placed the back legs in line with the front legs and let it dry overnight. Now that the bottom was complete, I moved on to the top. I had Lowe's cut the mirror to my precise measurements and 
I was able to have two pieces cut because I'm making two nightstand out of one mirror sheet that they offered which was $16 and some change around $18 with tax. I used the Gorilla construction adhesive again and just went around the perimeter of the nightstand. There is a small indentation in the middle so there is no need to put any uh, adhesive there. I used the wooden stick to smooth out the adhesive so that there wouldn't be any lumps and bumps and the mirror could lay flat on the surface. There is a curve in the front of this uh, storage unit and the mirror is obviously square and won't cover that but I'll handle that later and you see what I did with that area. After I was satisfied with the position of the mirror, I let it dry for about 30 minutes or so and then flipped it over so the weight could be on that side of the stand and create a strong adhesion between the plastic and the mirror. Here I'm applying the Gorilla adhesive to the side panels that I made earlier and then I will attach them to the side of the unit. Make sure that you don't put the adhesive too close to the edge because once you press it down it'll squish out and you want it to have a clean look. I then smoothed out the adhesive with my wooden stick again just so you know it could lay flat against the plastic. I then took my side panels and laid them on top of the unit and made sure that all the sides were lining up perfectly. I made especially sure that the top was exactly flush with the mirror because I will add some rhinestones to it later. I let it sit like that for about 30 minutes and then I flipped it over so the weight could be on that side. Here's a close-up view of the front plastic and the side panel and this is how flush you want it to sit. That's why you need to smooth out the adhesive so it can be really flush. While the side panels were still drying, it was time to decorate the little front bow. I used some Mod Podge and some crushed glass to decorate it. I inserted the a drawer at the top so any glass that would fall off could fall into the drawer. I put a thick layer of Mod Podge and then continue to sprinkle on my crushed glass. I made sure that no glass was on the front of this curve and no glass on the mirror itself. After I had the amount of crushed glass on there that I wanted, I went back with some Mod Podge and poured a good amount on top of it. And then I wiped the front clean, making sure that no little pieces were stuck to the front. I let the glass dry overnight and then started working on my drawer. I began by carefully removing the gray handle, making sure that I didn't break it. The self-adhesive velvet liner I purchased from Amazon is gonna take this glam look to a whole nother level. I traced the outline of the drawer onto the paper and then just went ahead and cut it out. After doing six drawers, I found this was the best order to complete each task and I will list them right here. I also found it was easiest to start with the back of the drawer to insert the liner and then work my way forward. After the liner is inserted all the way, go ahead and tape off the tops of all four sides to prevent a lot of overspray. Make sure you smooth out everything really nicely so you don't have any creases and everything is covered well. I did cut the liner about an eighth of an inch larger than what I had traced out just to make sure that all of the area was covered really well. Then I went outside and used the Rust-Oleum flat black spray paint and spray painted all four sides. 
Of course this step is completely optional. Whatever you prefer, the top is without and the bottom has the liner and the spray paint. I just thought that um, the plastic looked a little bit cheap, so this really made it look so elegant. Now that that part is complete, it is time to decorate the front. This batting came from Walmart and I cut it to size just to cover the front only. You cannot make this too thick or the drawer will not slide in. I also cut a slit in the batting where the handle will go. I found this beautiful silver metallic crocodile imprint vinyl at Walmart and it was only $6.50 for a yard at time of purchase. Great find! I cut it to size to fit the front of the drawer. I used the heavy duty spray adhesive by Gorilla to attach the batting to the front of the drawer only. And then I sprayed the vinyl with emphasis on the edges because that is where the vinyl will attach to the plastic and the adhesion needs to be strong. Then I trimmed off all the excess vinyl on these curved corners because if it's too thick right there the drawer will not slide in. I trimmed the bottom as well to make sure that nothing was overlapping. Next I cut an opening from the inside of the drawer into the vinyl where the handle will be reinserted. I started by wrapping this super blingy, super sticky rhinestone on the round side first and then worked my way down to the other side. I made sure that I did not take all of the backing off so my hands wouldn't stick to this rhinestone. After the top and the sides were on, I removed the backing and then wrapped the rest around. Then I snipped off the excess and I had a beautiful handle without spending any more money. Then I just simply snapped it in place through the slit that I had made earlier. I bought a rhinestone sheet from Amazon which was long enough to accommodate the side without having to piece it together. I cut a row of five to cover the gap between the side panel and the mirror. And I used a row of two in the front and back to cover the edge of the mirror. The final step was to cover the front panels in between the drawers. And I used this easy auto wrap which I had on hand uh, to do that. It is super reflective with a mirror-like finish. I cut it about an eighth of an inch smaller than the actual surface so the drawers wouldn't get hung up on the paper. I couldn't be more pleased with how this came out. I am so excited and so thrilled to share this makeover with you. I hope you love it too and I want to thank all of my subscribers for staying with me, watching and supporting me. If you are new here, welcome and I hope that you consider subscribing. Here are just a few more close-ups and decorating ideas.
Once again, I hope that I inspired you to try your own glamorous DIY project. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.